Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Readsy. Today we're going to be talking about the types of memoirs. So this week is themed all around memoirs. We already talked about how to write a memoir in our last video. Today we're looking at the types of memoirs. So normally in these videos, when we do these genre weeks, in the second video we look at five tropes in the genre, but memoirs are really like fiction, you know? You don't really get to choose what happened because you're telling a real story. So it's not a matter of including or not including different types of tropes like you would in fiction. So the approach for this one is going to be a little different and we're just going to talk about the different types of memoir. Memoir is often kind of just lumped in as one category, but there are a ton of different memoir subgenres. So let's chat about them in this video. So first of all is the autobiographical memoir. In our first video, I made the distinction between an autobiography and a memoir. An autobiography is your life story, beginning until present, whereas a memoir is the narrative of a specific story that happened to you. There is definitely an intersection between them, and that intersection is called an autobiographical memoir. So this is a memoir, it has a memoir structure, it tells a cohesive narrative, but that narrative is essentially your whole life, or a significant portion of it. These memoirs really do rely on the strength of the narrative structure that can be created from your whole life. You need to be able to find that overarching structure. It can't just be a series of different events like you might have more in an autobiography. These memoirs also really shine on the strength of the author's voice. So a couple examples would be I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou or Me Talk Pretty One Day by David Sedaris. The latter is an example of more anecdotal structure if that seems like it might be similar to what you're writing. So next up is the experience memoir. This is the most popular style of memoir. It's probably what you think of when you think of a memoir. And it's basically just a memoir that focuses on a specific narrative within the author's life. Usually it's based around some kind of struggle that the author faced and what they learned from overcoming that struggle. There are so many memoirs in this subgenre out there, but a couple that you can check out if you want some examples would be when Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi, or Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. So the next type of memoir is a little similar, and it's the event memoir. There's definitely a lot of overlap between the experience memoir and the event memoir. The main difference is just that the event memoir focuses on a specific event in the author's life, rather than a more overarching narrative. An experience memoir might cover years or even decades, but an event memoir zeroes in on a very specific period of time. So for example, The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion, this follows the year after her husband's death. It's specifically based around a year-long period. Or Into Thin Air by John Crowker. This is a bit of a controversial account of the 1996 Mount Everest disaster written by a journalist who was present the day a climbers were killed. Again, this one zeroes in on a very specific event. It's based on a very specific event that happened rather than a more overarching narrative, and that's kind of the difference between these two styles of memoir. Next is the themed memoir. So this type of memoir constructs its narrative by way of a central theme, and that theme is usually used to tie various events together. Rather than necessarily a cohesive narrative, the narrative is more thematic. Of course, in order to write this style of memoir, you need a cohesive theme to tie together the different events of your life. This is a difficult memoir to write because you just decide one day you want to write a themed memoir. You know, it's kind of tricky to force a theme out of your life. But if you notice one, if you notice that a specific theme has emerged and ties together these different aspects of your life, this might be the right type of memoir for your narrative. A great example of this one is Educated by Tara Westover. This memoir is about the importance of education and that's the central theme. The book is about her upbringing in a family of religious survivalists who basically lived off the grid and she didn't have access to education and how her search for education helped her overcome that. Next is the family memoir. So this type of memoir is where the author kind of becomes a mirror to look at their whole family or other family members rather than just themselves. So rather than just telling their narrative, they're telling the narrative of themselves and a family member or themselves and their family. So for example, Brother I'm Dying by Edwidge Danikat. This is written as a love letter to his family, primarily telling the story of his father and his uncle. Even though it's his memoir, he's not just telling his narrative, he's telling the narrative of some of his family members. Or Native Country of the Heart by Cherry Moraga. This is also a family memoir that's primarily focused on, on a mother-daughter relationship. Next is the childhood memoir. This is kind of a subset of autobiographical memoirs, and just as you would expect based on the name, it chronicles the author's childhood, usually covering a range of about five to eight years. So just like how an autobiographical story is a life story, 
This is just the story of your childhood. So for example, Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt. This actually won the 1997 Pulitzer Prize and it follows McCourt's childhood growing up impoverished in Dublin. Or Boy Tales of Childhood by Roald Dahl. This is Roald Dahl's memoir of his childhood in the 1920s and 30s. And it sheds light on the themes that ended up playing heavily in his fictional works. All right, two more. So the next one is also a pretty popular genre and it's also fairly self-explanatory and it's the travel memoir. Travel memoirs are pretty self-explanatory in that they feature traveling. But what's important about these types of memoirs is that the author is not the star of the book, the place is. The author is kind of trying to capture the feeling of this place. So it's not just about the author and what they learned and what they felt, but also how they experienced the place and the history of this place. Probably one of the most famous um, is Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. This follows Gilbert's post-divorce travels and was actually even adapted into a movie. And then another pretty famous one is The Great Railway Bazaar by Paul Thoreau. This book chronicles a four-month travel by train from London all the way to East Asia and then back again, and it was kind of one of the books that helped found the structure of the modern travel memoir. So there's just one more. <laughs> it's probably the most self-explanatory of them all, and it's celebrity memoir. Celebrity memoirs are literally just memoirs written by a celebrity. If you're not a celebrity, you're probably not writing a celebrity memoir. If you are a celebrity, hello. Now admittedly many celebrity memoirs are ghostwritten, not all certainly, but the purpose of these memoirs is generally to kind of give an insight to the person behind the public figure and kind of create a more authentic look at them help people relate to them. These memoirs often feature political figures, sports stars, actors, comedians, or musicians. Basically, if a book is written by a celebrity, then it's probably a celebrity memoir. And if you're a celebrity, then this might be the type of memoir that you're writing. If you're not, then I have some unfortunate news about the qualifications needed to write this memoir first, which is unfortunately that you kind of need to be famous before you can write one. So if you want to write a celebrity memoir, but you aren't a celebrity, there might be a few steps that you need to get to working on before you can start thinking about your memoir. All right, so those are the different types of memoirs. Please do let me know um, which genres you would like us to look at in future videos. I know science fiction has been requested quite a lot, so that one is queued up next. And of course, let me know if you're writing a memoir, which type of memoir you are writing. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.